Today we're joined by Aziz uh, Abu Sara. Aziz Abu Sara is um, a, is a TED speaker. He's uh, uh, he's uh, he, he has a very very interesting profile. He's a National Geographic explorer. He's a writer, and he is above all a peace activist. And we need in these polarizing times somebody who is also willing uh, to talk about peace. So thank you very much, um, uh, Aziz Abu Sara, for talking to us. You know, I was watching some of your earlier interviews preparing for this conversation, and I. I think one of the points you made was that an overwhelming number of Gazans, people who live in Gaza, have never actually met a Jewish person. And, and, and I think you were trying to address how did we get here? So let's start with how did we get here? Yeah, it's a, it's a long story and you're absolutely right. Most vast majority of Gazans have never met an Israeli, have never met a Jewish person. The only image of Israelis are the planes that drop the bombs you, you mentioned and soldiers and checkpoints. And that explains that explains hatred, that explains fear, that explains a, a lot of things. I mean, that's a reality of how they know each other. How we got here, Hamas won elections, not by the way, by majority of vote, but by plurality of vote uh, back in 2006. In 2007, there was an internal struggle in Palestine between Hamas and Fatah, and Hamas won through uh, an armed uh, fight and kicked out Fatah from Gaza. They lost the West Bank. They won uh, Gaza through, through this. And then in the years after, I would argue, and there's some documentations of this, a lot of Gazans actually didn't want Hamas. There were some protests that had hundreds of thousands of people out in the streets. But again, Hamas isn't necessarily a democracy. It isn't a democracy. It's an authoritarian regime. And so they uh, they didn't let those kind of protests uh, exist. Uh, and they, uh, they put people in prison. And when Hamas started getting... I think, uh, popularity a little bit more and still not. I, I don't believe everyone in Gaza is a big fan of Hamas in, in any way, as some people like to to project it. But it started getting some popularity because the alternative to Hamas is Fatah in the West Bank has not been able to really bring any um, anything that the Palestinians can say, oh, here, without armed yeah. struggle without fighting, we can get to a peace agreement, we can get something out of it. If anything, uh, Bibi Netanyahu has openly said that his strategy was to weaken the Palestinian Authority and strengthen Hamas. And in five rounds of violence between Hamas and Israel, Hamas was always able to gain something at the end of each one of those rounds, while Fatah wasn't through peaceful means. And that, I think, solidified Hamas argument, only through fighting, only through violence, only through what they call armed struggle, we are able to achieve things. And uh, unfortunately, we we all let that we all let that happen when when we not achieving things through diplomacy, it makes people think that only through violence we can achieve it. You know, uh, some of the Israelis that I've been speaking to here uh, make the point that the Hamas killed, quote-unquote, left-leaning, left-wing, liberal Israelis. And I was speaking to a woman from London who, whose parents have been taken hostage by Hamas, and she said uh, that her father used to take Palestinians, uh, he, he was part of a volunteer group to take Palestinians uh, who were ill to hospitals. There was another gentleman I met who said that his kibbutz, his community, was filled with left-leaning uh, peace activists, pro-peace activists who recognized uh, the right of Palestine to have its own state. And he said, after Hamas came in and killed people like this, how are you going to create a consensus? How are you going to create an enabling environment to say, don't punish civilians? And of course, as I'm talking to you, explosions are going off behind me in Tel Aviv. But of course, bombs have been dropped on Gaza through the last week as well. Uh, how does one answer this question? How does one answer this yeah. question that they would, you know, go ahead. I, I have friends. I have, as a peace activist, I have many Israeli friends and some of them have directly been hit. Uh, one of my one of my friends is presumed a hostage in Gaza. Um, so I completely understand that and, and I feel for it. I mean, the first couple of days I was, I was devastated because I couldn't believe these are my friends who've been attacked. These are, like you said, are, are, are the leftists. I couldn't get out of bed 
in the first mm-hmm. couple of days feeling sick to my stomach. Um, it's it's more than just Israeli and Palestinians. Like I said, these are people I deeply care about, people we stood in protests together, people who, like you said, care about Palestinian cause uh, significantly. And I, I would say, though, and it's really important, I've heard a few of the families of people who've been killed, people who've been taken hostage, in from a kibbutz like Be'eri or Kfar Aza, who actually have been the most reasonable, ironically, of everyone in, in Israel. The ones who are coming out speaking against more violence, the ones who are speaking against the war, have been coming from families of, of victims, of people who've been killed uh, by Hamas. Uh, somebody like the brother of, uh, of Chaim uh, Katzman, who came out in the day they buried him and said, let us not use my brother's death to kill more people, um, to, to seek revenge. I, I can't even imagine somebody saying that. Um, look, my brother was killed when I was 10 years old uh, by Israeli soldiers, and it took me eight years to get to where this family has gotten. It took me eight years of processing anger and wanting revenge. How, 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 old, how old was your brother? I'm sorry to hear that. How old was my, your brother when he was killed? My brother was 19 when, when he was killed. I was 10. So, so I, I completely understand that feeling. But look, it's, we say this again and again in, in our peace meetings. We don't make peace with our friends. We're already friends. You make peace with your enemies. The reason we are here today is because for the last 30 years, we've done very little, honestly, to get to peace. Governments have not. A status quo is good for a lot of people. And that is a reality. We can't deny it. And we, Israelis and Palestinians, we, the international community, are outraged now. If we were outraged years ago, months ago, if the United States have not completely ignored the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, where a week ago, one of the American spokespeople a week before, uh, before t- this whole thing started, one of the American uh, uh, people from the from the White House, representative of the White House, said how great things in the Middle East are, and it's calm, and everything is good right now. And they really believe that status quo is is functional, is possible. This is why we are here today. Now, it doesn't justify it, and this is really important. There is nothing that justifies killing civilians. Nothing that justifies killing innocent people. But we also can't ignore that we are somehow, all of us have a blood in our hands. All of us are complicit. Mm. You, I want to read out your tweet. You said, I know we are outraged now, but we should have been outraged years ago. Uh, I'm reading this as I can hear the sound of... Okay, those are sirens behind me and jets in the air. You need to go into a safe room. I, I probably have to go inside, so I'm just going to I'm just going to move with with this in the meantime. But yeah, I was please be safe. I, That's the most yeah, important. I was, I, I was, yeah. All right. We're going to come in here. We're just going into the safe shelter. We're getting more used to this now, um, though it still takes a lot of getting used to. We are moving into the safe shelter, and I was going to ask you. To comment on this, on this on tweet. The, wait, I can read that tweet if you want me to. Yeah, you can you? I'm just walking into the safe, into the safe room. Yeah, yes, go absolutely. ahead. Yes. I said yes. I know we are outraged now, but we should have been outra- outraged years ago. Our failure to reach a peace agreement is why we are here today. Our incompetent leaders is why we got to this point. Our outrage is late. Yeah, so I want you to, when you say our incompetent leaders, which leaders do you include in this? Uh, both Israelis and Palestinians. And the Israeli side, like I mentioned, Netanyahu, as recently as 2019, we have quotes from him saying, if I strengthen Hamas, which is what he did, uh, it will kill the two-state solution. That is what one of the main reasons that stopped us from reaching two-state solutions. You look at Hamas and they did not come out openly and talk about a reaching an agreement and understanding how important it is. You look at the West Bank, we have leadership that's so old 
uh, that even today we barely get any comments from our president. It's like he's a foreign leader, but also is extremely corrupt and, and violence and corruption go very well together. Uh, our leadership has been has been awful. Everyone is benefiting except us, the, the civilians, the people. And if, if it's up to me, or if you want to really put the people who are on top, who are responsible for this, um, accountable, hold them accountable, we should start with, with these leaders, with the ones who have made us get to here. And I don't, again, exclude not the Europeans and not the Americans. Uh, when, when Europeans now shamelessly tell me you haven't done enough to change your leadership or Americans, I remind them that is not true. I personally have. I personally actually tried to make a change in leadership in Jerusalem. And when I received death threats, when I was attacked by both governments, Israeli and Palestinian, um, the Europeans refused to even talk to me. They, they said, they basically said, we're happy with the status quo. The Americans, which I am a citizen of, did nothing and did not care. Senators who I called their offices would not talk to me. So when now everyone is outraged and saying, I'm angry, I'm angry. How could this have happened? Are you kidding me? How could this mm -hmm. have happened? Everyone, if you, heard, if you heard anyone who knows about this place, Months ago, years ago, we were all saying, this is going to go out of control. We need to do something. And politicians, diplomats believe, no, we don't. And now we're paying the price for their actions. And unfortunately, we trusting today the same people who have gotten us to where we are to trying to get us out of it. Well, we really think Bibi Netanyahu is the right person to get Israel out of it. The guy who thought strengthening Hamas is a good thing for Israel, he's the guy that's supposed to go. Or Smutrich, who said Israel is a blessing. He's a cabinet minister in Israel. Israel, uh, Hamas is a blessing to Israel. Or Ben Gvir, a racist who's known for inciting hatred, is still responsible of the police in the West, in, in, in Israel. Uh, I am in shock that we don't still get it. And we still, Palestinians and Israelis also, keep falling for propaganda, for leaders who try to use us as pawns against each other, hate each other, people willing to sacrifice their lives in the name of defending a homeland and fighting against an enemy when we don't get that at the end of the day, it's for the benefit of these leaders and it's not really for the homeland.